Okay, tonight this is just going to be a short one. I don't know how well we are in focus or anything. We'll give it a try. Watch the neighbors go by in their fancy little cars. Uh, I scoured the internet. I wanted to build a welding cart that would fit my needs. Okay, I looked at a lot of neat ideas. A lot of guys on YouTube have really got some creative ideas. Building welding tables, workbenches, welding carts, but nothing really quite fit the bill for what I was looking for. So I set about, you know, I started out with a, an old SIP MIG uh, 170. Made in Italy, and you know, it's been an amazing rig. On 7525, it'll drop right into spray with a pretty easy, where they say you need a minimum of 80% uh, and 20% before it'll go to spray. Well, this one makes a liar out of them, but you know, maybe I got lucky. I've had this machine for probably 25 years. Picked it up used, service man brought it home from Italy. And then he ended up getting a better welder and he said he didn't need it anymore, so he was happy to part with it. So I set about building the cart and I started with a basic, you know, frame to, you know, I want to take the wheels off my MIG machine and put it on the cart and I had a, adopted a uh, how do I put this? I had bought a Yes Welder Cut 55 Plasma. Okay, now I know when you buy the Chinese, you know, you get what you pay for. But I work in my garage and I just, you know, this is a hobby for me. I'm a retired mechanic. So I took and I bought this Yes Welder Cut 55 Plasma. Got a hell of a price on it, or so I thought. Gave two ninety nine for it. Next day, the price went to two eighty nine. Oh well, what's ten dollars between friends, right? Well, the thing arrives and it's DOA. It first it won't uh, it won't even activate the arc. It won't even start. And I messed with it a little bit and came to the conclusion that it was just a solenoid valve. You know, stopping the air. So I contacted them. Lo and behold, they offered me twenty dollars credit. Give me a break. That's not going to work. I want a machine that works. This one came DOA. So I negotiated. When you negotiate with the Chinese, you're kind of at their mercy. So it's an email, and it's two thirty every morning because that's. China, they're up and awake. Well, we go back and forth for four or five days and I'm not making much progress. I says, look, give me a machine that works. Still not getting through. Still not getting through. So, I finally, I said, okay, next step, you refund my money. Well, we'll refund your money, but you're going to have to pay shipping back. Well, let's see. Shipping to China might be kind of more than the machine cost. I've heard that China subsidizes all the shipping coming this way just so they can keep the market going. Well, that wasn't going to work. So I said, okay. Next email, I said, okay, I guess we're going to have to take it another step here. I've got a YouTube presence and... My last few videos have had thousands of views. Think that got their attention? Yeah, it did. But you know, I didn't tell the whole story. The, the videos that had thousands of views were fishing videos. <laughs> Up at Drano Lake watching the boats go around and while they're trying to catch the spring Chinook. But you don't have to tell them everything. So we get the Next morning, I get an email from a new person in customer service. All of a sudden, it's Anna instead of Dway. And Anna says, it has been moved up to me to deal with this. So, she said, would you send me a video of what it's doing or not doing? Well, that was easy, so I sent him a video of that. 
next morning I get an email and it says, okay, we've reviewed the video and yeah, we have a problem. Uh, we will refund your money 100%, but there's no need to ship the machine back. You keep the machine. Okay, well, I've still got a broke machine. So, no big deal. You know, I'm retired. Boards, the main boards for cold solder joints and loose connections. And I found a couple cold solder joints that weren't 100% to my liking, so I re-soldered them, tightened up the loose connections that I found, put it together, and it, it worked. Until the next time I needed it, and then it quit working again. Okay, this time the display quit working. Well, that turned out to be a fairly easy one, because when I opened it up this time, I knew where I was going to look, and I was looking for either the flat ribbon cable from the display and the control board down to the main board, or something in that area. So I open it up, I look at it, and the uh, control board and the display driver are little tiny boards. They're probably, I'm guessing, maybe two inches square. And the control board has a chip on it that's about an inch square with, I don't know, maybe eight legs on each of the four sides. Well, I get out, I've got a 25X Lupe, little eyeball thing, and I put a bright light on it, and I just started going over it, just looking everything over as close as I could. Well, I found a tiny, tiny piece of braided solder. I didn't even know braided solder existed until I looked it up. It turns out they use it for wicking solder when they put too much solder on a build. When they build a board or a chips, you know, they'll use the wicking solder. Well, this little piece of wicking solder was sitting across maybe four or five legs of this pin, of this uh, chip. Well, no wonder I was getting different results every time I wiggled it. It was touching different legs. So I removed that, put her back together, and it works like a dream. Okay, now a little bit of effort, and I've got a free plasma. Life's good, right? Well, let me show you what happened. I thought, well, you know what? I saved that $300. I got it back, and they were good to their word. So I, let's see if we can shine them. Come on. Okay, there we go. So I took the money. Come on, let's get this thing to behave. And I invested in an Evolution Raptor saw. Okay, this sweetheart is, let me bring it, open it up so you can see what it is. Okay, don't do this at home. Okay, this blade, this carbide tips it cuts dry, it cuts quick. It's a fantastic machine. I've had experience with it. When I was working as a mechanic, I had one of these mounted on the back of my truck. So I knew what the saw would do. So I paid, I don't know, $315 for it, something on that order. Oh, down below there, you see my yes welder. That's my, uh, come on, come on, bitch, turn around. There we go. Oh, okay, let's draw back on it. There's a lot more to this card. You thought it was just going to be something plain and simple. Well, the truth of the matter is, I got carried away. I ended up buying a ACDC TIG from Yes Welder too. I thought, you know, what have I got to lose? So, I picked it up while it was on sale, and you know what? I'm teaching myself to TIG weld aluminum. Something I never mastered when I was working. I could, I could run the MEG gun all day long, you know, or stick. But as far as TIG, that was kind of a foreign thing to me. So I bought the Yes Welder, and you know what? I'm loving it. But getting back to the cart, this cart is a work in progress. We got the saw, we got a MIG down below, the 170SIP, 
we've got two bottles. One is 75-25, the other one is pure argon for the TIG. Don't look at that mess of cords underneath because that's just the 220 cords. The other one coming out, plugged in, goes into a junction box and it feeds all of my 110. I've got a drill press. I've got a four and a half inch grinder. And I've got a old, old Black & Decker grinder. And you can see from the stone that I use it for grinding my tungsten. I seem to be touching way too much. And so I'm doing a lot of grinding as I'm learning. But looking over the card here, it's turned in. I decided to make a work table, a folding work table. So I got two props. Just pop those out folds down and then it goes and stores in a nice comfortable spot in my garage. I'm loving it. I mean it's a work table for everything. I'm using it for some home repairs. I'm, you know, I got a work table, a bench to work off of when I need it. I just fold it out, drag it out in the middle of the garage, move mama's car out of the garage of course, and go to work. There you can see my my MIG, a couple of fire extinguishers, I got a Haugen uh, cutter brooch down there, mag drill, and I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do with all my hoses and cords. That's probably one of the next projects, figure out what to do with them. I put a couple clips on here and I got my squares hanging there, got a couple of my vice grips, you know. Life is good. I'm just kind of enjoying this. Still a work in progress, trying to figure out where to do everything. Every time I think about it, I start adding on. I'm starting to worry now that I didn't put enough heavy enough casters underneath it. That'll be the next project, probably, is to strip everything off, put heavier casters on, probably raise it two inches. And then I got me a little pneumatic stool that goes up and down so it adjusts so I can sit down at the table and be pretty comfortable. So I hope you've enjoyed my little dissertation on my project and kind of how it evolved. It's uh, when you're retired, you got a lot of time on your hands. You know, you you start dreaming at night. Well, I could do that. You know, I mounted the grinder. You know, so I could grind the tungsten. I mounted a vise. That's the best thing I could have done. I took it off my other workbench. I've got it right out here where I'm working, where I'm using it all the time. Picked up an old drill press and slapped it up there. You know what? Need to put it to work now. I guess I'll let you go for now. I hope I haven't bored you too much. I hope you've enjoyed a little bit of this. If you do, give me a thumbs up. Thanks, folks. You take care.